Anti-government forces in East Ukraine say they're ready to stop their resistance if Kiev actually signs a peace plan during talks in Minsk on Friday. That's after Ukraine's president said at the NATO summit that a ceasefire could be announced as early as tomorrow. Elsewhere on the ground, the violence has also shown no sign of letting up, as we just so graphically seen, particularly outside, too, the port city of Mariupol. Artis Paula Slea is one of the few foreign reporters remaining in the region. The leaders of the republics of Lugansk and Donetsk saying that they are ready to lay down weapons tomorrow if Kiev signs on a political settlement. Now, they will be bringing their own proposals for a peace plan at the talks to be held on Friday in the Belarusian capital of Minsk. A lot of their proposals coincide with what the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, put forward before. Amongst some of their suggestions are a ban on all army aviation flights over Donetsk and Lugansk. They're also calling for the Organization for Security and Cooperation of Europe to monitor the ceasefire implementation. They also want the zone divided into five security sectors, and each would have a minimum of some 40 monitors. They also want humanitarian corridors to be opened for refugees and humanitarian aid. Now, the Donetsk Republic is calling for a 50-kilometer demilitarized zone around its borders. This follows a statement earlier by the Ukrainian president Petro Poroshenko that there could be a ceasefire agreement tomorrow. All of this, however, is happening as we see an intensification of fighting on the ground. One of the flashpoints at the moment is the city of Mariupol, which for days now has been encircled by anti-government fighters. The Ukrainian army is trying to push through and there has been intensive tank fire from some of the sources on the ground there. We're hearing that some of the tanks have gone up in flames. The the anti-government fighters say that they're trying to secure that area to prevent the army from taking up position on that territory so that they can shell residential areas. Here in Donetsk, where I am, there's also been erratic shelling throughout the course of the day, and we are hearing from locals that some 40 rockets were fired at the city throughout Thursday. Now, of course, parallel to all of this, there is a humanitarian crisis that is still unfolding. My colleague Maria Fonoshina caught up with the mothers of newborn babies who are being brought into the world in the most tragic of circumstances. It's already been a traumatic start for this two-day-old boy. In the months up to his birth and amid heavy shelling in Lugansk, his mother and father desperately looked for a place to escape to. Anastasia's brother, like many in Lugansk, also had to flee. With no time for goodbyes, relatives lost track of each other. Anastasia arrived here to give birth, a tiny Ukrainian village near the Russian border, still safe and calm. There are other refugee moms here, and while they say they are fine, they worry for their baby's health. It's scary to deliver a child at a time like this. We don't know what the future holds for us, or for him. Many maternity homes in eastern Ukraine lack basic equipment today. Vitaly is a businessman from Rostov in southern Russia, but is originally from Donetsk. Over the last three months, he's been organizing humanitarian aid for his homeland's troubled regions. The charity he established has received money and parcels from around the globe. His mission now is to deliver them. We deliver aid all over the place. Our volunteers practically shuttle along the front line. It's dangerous over there, so no one risks delivering them food and such like. Vitaly is heading for the maternity home on the Ukrainian side of the border we were at earlier. This is the checkpoint of anti-Kiev fighters. This territory is controlled by, by them. 
Vitali always cooperates with anti-government soldiers. Without them, he says, the journey would be too dangerous. This time, Alexei is caught in his cargo. Alexei says that humanitarian convoys are often targeted on purpose. We change cars all the time to avoid being spotted. We use various means of delivery. After a nerve-wracking four-hour trip, Vitaly's aid safely reaches its final destination. Food, water and vital supplies for expectant mothers and newborns are here. Most of the patients have already been discharged, but tomorrow there will be more. Marif Noshnati in eastern Ukraine.